Hey guys, it's Gary Dean, DetailJuice.com and the brand new ResetCharters.com. Uh, I, I do a couple different things, well, several different things. I've got multiple businesses and it's, it's hard to keep them all separate when all of them are passions of mine and um, basically people who look for me are looking for me. So whatever it is I'm doing, they're going to see that. So basically what I'm getting at is, I'm gonna do this little video about uh, making my world famous beef jerky and showing you how I do that. I'm gonna throw it on the detailjuice.com channel and we're gonna see how that goes. If you guys like this kind of stuff, I may go ahead and put the Reset Charter stuff on that channel. I don't see a real reason to separate the businesses um, mainly because it's me, I am the brand. Gary Dean is the brand for whatever I'm doing, uh, not necessarily the actual thing that I'm doing. So the detailjuice.com thing is uh, my product line, I merged my detailing services into that, and that's what I've been doing for years and years and years. I've got several other businesses that really don't lend themselves well to making videos on, but this new Reset Charters deal, which is a personal watercraft tour and rental company uh, based out of Tampa Bay, Florida, where I live, and I feel like it will add a different dynamic to the current channel. Now, I could do two, but the reality is I'm connected in a much more personal way to my customers than most companies are. I don't own a gigantic company. Um, I have several small companies uh, where I focus on customer service and quality product. And that's my main focus in anything that I do is making sure that I have the absolute best service for what I provide. And notice that I put for service before quality, um, but the reality is they're both very important and at the top of my list of, well, importance. So I believe I'm gonna try to merge the two together mainly because part of the reason I'm doing this charter thing, this whole uh, jet ski, personal watercraft kind of thing, you know, jet ski is actually a term, term that Kawasaki owns. Uh, that's actually their vehicle. Um, I, in my Reset Charters venture, I purchased brand new Sea-Doo's and Yamaha. I did not buy any Kawasaki, not necessarily for any reason other than Yamahas are known for reliability and Sea-Doo, uh, well, they're just fun. Uh, they're not unreliable either. And I wanted to get a mix of them, especially on the, for the launch so that I could basically decide for myself which is better. So that's exactly what I did. So we've got top of the line stuff and the personal watercraft tour and rental company is going to be a test bed for uh, my marine line that I'm actually putting a lot more effort into now, being in Florida and that kind of thing. Um, and I've always had a passion for uh, marine detailing and that kind of thing, but I've ventured away a little bit because autos are far easier to come by. It's, it's easier to be uh, busy all the time. It's easier to make money with cars. Um, you know, generally boats are a higher ticket item, uh, far more luxurious uh, as far as a, uh, a thing to have than a vehicle is. A vehicle, um, they're utilitarian. They're, you have to have them to get around every day, whereas watercraft, be it a uh, personal watercraft or a boat, um, it's, it's more pleasure oriented and leisurely uh, for, you know, a luxury situation. You don't have to have it. So, um, I am trying to get into the marine environment more and I'm gonna use my skis as the test bed for some of the really awesome marine stuff that I've been working on for years. And we're finally to the point where a lot of that stuff is ready and I'll be launching it. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you guys how to make my beef jerky. We'll see how this goes over with you guys. Now again, I've been mailing this stuff out to friends uh, for, for years and you know, sometimes I use it as a promotional item uh, for buddies of mine or whatever, but the reality is at one time I was really gung-ho about starting a jerky business, but there's a lot of difficulty with the FDA and the USDA, uh, the Florida Department of Agriculture and the US Department of Ag Agriculture. There's so many hoops to jump through and I just, it's 
far easier to do something else. And that's kind of where I'm at. I don't mind sharing the recipe with you guys, which is what I intend to do today. Uh, I want to show you from the get go what I use to cut the meat, um, how I cut the meat and what meat I use. Then I'm going to show you the ingredients uh, per pound of meat uh, that uh, I have concocted the formula there uh, to come up with my uh, world famous pirate punch jerky. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started on this. I'm going to show you guys what I'm working with. First of all, we're just going to go down here and you're going to get a glimpse of what I'm doing. So I've got a trash can right next to the island here um, to put trash in. But I just want to show you what's going on. All right, so um, when I do jerky, I start out with um, eye of round. And uh, the eye of round is generally $4.99 a pound. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, I buy, you know, two and a half, three pounds at a time. This is actually almost four pounds. But by the time you trim all this fat off of it, because fat uh, will basically just go rancid and it won't dry. So it's just basically going to rot the rest of the meat uh, over time. So you want to cut all this fat off and just get the, uh, the very lean part of the meat. Notice that's a very lean cut. Um, and it stays, you know, pretty tender. Anyway, I basically trim all the fat off of uh, a roast like this with a paring knife. Nothing fancy. Um, most important part of this whole thing is to have a very sharp knife. I use this sharpener in my kitchen. Um, I believe it came from Walmart. I'm not sure, but it is a ceramic uh, sharpening deal and it works really well. Um, to slice up my meat, I use this uh, pretty fancy Victorinox um, knife here. I believe this knife was I think it's called a chef's knife, I'm not sure. Anyway, it was like 60 bucks on Amazon. It's a really, really nice knife, but I keep it sharp with that sharpener. Um, I will take this uh, um, roast right here, I trim all the fat off of it, and then I cut it in half. Okay, so I'll cut it like long ways in half, and half of one looks like this. I guess I should have prefaced this whole video by saying, you need to wash your hands before you touch your meat. <laughs> so uh, always wash your hands uh, before you go into cutting the meat. But anyway, I've cut a couple of pieces and uh, I generally will have, and I buy my meat from Publix generally, they have very high quality meat there. Uh, I know that you know Publix is a Florida and Georgia company. I, I don't know where else they're at. So if you don't have Publix, just have your local butcher uh, they can slice the meat for you, but I, I take half of that uh, roast, I slice it, and uh, now I just basically take the knife and you press it down. To, get, uh, to make it easier to cut, a lot of people will put it in the, in the freezer for about 30 minutes. I don't bother with all that. I don't find that um, it's too difficult to cut uh, in general. So if I'm going to cut it by myself, I'll go ahead and uh, sharpen my knife and I will slice it, you know, one piece at a time, just like you see me doing here. Um, I do somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of an inch thick. Um, uh, definitely not a quarter of an inch thick. Definitely not an eighth of an inch thick. It's somewhere in between those two. Uh, it, I find that it dries. Um, you know, I can, I've got my Excalibur dehydrator, which I'll show you uh, when I get to the, that portion of the video. Um, that dryer, I can dry about six and a half pounds of meat uh, each time I run it. And it takes about four and a half to five hours, depending on how thick you cut it uh, to dry the meat. So uh, as far as the meat here, you need to marinate the meat for 24 hours before you go uh, putting it in your dehydrator. Uh, and that's because uh, the beef needs to take in all of the spices and seasonings you put in so that the meat actually tastes like what you're using uh, when you dry it. So 24 hour um, time for marination and uh, then you can dry the meat for four and a half to five hours and you're good to go. Too thick and it's not going to dry in that time 
uh, amount. If you ever find yourself where you slice it too thick, you can fillet it. These knives are great for that. It's not a fillet knife, but it does work well for that. So I literally will just cut all of this. Um, this is roughly three pounds or roughly four pounds for both of these. So when I mentioned before, I like to, um, my, my batches are based on per pound increments. So when I tell you how to mix up your marinade uh, by the pound, you just take however many pounds of meat you have and you just multiply the marinade uh, ingredients uh, by that many pounds. So for example, this has uh, 3.8, 3.8, Three, by the time I take all that fat off, it's probably more like three and a half pounds. Uh, and then this realistically is about three and a half pounds. So we're about seven pounds, but I usually go a little bit lighter on the marinade because you don't necessarily need it floating in there. So if I did six pounds worth of marinade, it would be totally fine, not necessarily a problem. So, you know, like I mentioned, cleanliness is the most important thing. Wash your hands. Uh, before you start touching the meat, wash your hands before you touch anything else, uh, and just keep it clean. Keep it tight, keep it right. So anyway, um, I won't bore you guys anymore with this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, shut the camera down now and finish cutting this meat uh, because I think I've answered any and all questions that you might have with that. If not, you know, feel free to uh, send me a message, that's fine. Um, and we'll go from there. But I'm gonna cut this up and we'll be right back when I show you how to marinate this stuff.